Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial. We are coding our Clash Royale light game, right? And our game is basically finished. We just have to add one more thing, that is the sounds. So today we're going to be adding sounds to our game. But before we start adding sounds, I want to do something. Uh, I think my enemy is too overpowered compared to me because my enemy is just spawning a lot of units all the time and I just take too long to get more and more mana. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my mana to increase faster. So I'm gonna go here on my playroom at the spot that I say here that my mana timer is equal 60. I will actually change it to 30. So instead of taking one second, I will now need only half a second to get more mana. But that's not the only place where we have to change it. I'll also have to change it on the loop tab. Because here, we check if the mana timer is smaller or equal than zero, then we reset the mana timer to be 60. But instead, I want it to be 30. So see how we had to change the value on two places? And this would be way easier if we had a variable to store the, the, the amount of time that we have to wait to get more mana, right? So just to make it simpler and easier and better to read, I'm also going to create a variable here to store how long I have to wait to get a new mana. So I'm going to say game dot mana cooldown. So the cooldown is how long I have to wait to get new mana. And this is going to be 30. And my mana timer won't start with 30. My mana timer will start with game dot mana cooldown game.mana cooldown. And in the loop tab, I want to reset my mana, uh, my mana timer, I mean. So I have to reset my mana not to 30, but to game.mana cooldown. So then now if I want to get more mana, uh, I mean, if I get, if I want to get mana faster, I just have to change the cooldown for the mana, right? To get more mana. And that's way easier now. We can change all the variables through the start tab here. And I also want to change other thing. I don't want to start with zero mana. I want to start with 20 mana. I want to start with my mana at maximum. So now when I press play, you can see my, that my mana starts in 20. I can spam a lot of units at once. And then my mana regenerates faster as well, right? Okay, that's good. So now let's start adding sounds. That's the only thing that is missing in our game, sounds. So the first sound that I want to add is the sound for when we click on one of the cards. So the sound for when we spawn a unit. So I'm gonna go here on the sound section and I'm gonna click on the plus button and I'm gonna look for a sound to spawn my unit. So here, I chose this one here. So that's the one that I'm gonna use, the correct. So I'll click on the correct and I click on select asset and then I have to give it a name. So this is gonna be my unit spawn. That's the sound for when I spawn a unit. So now that we have the unit spawn sound here, I'm gonna go inside my unit and whenever this unit is created, so here on the start tab, I want to play that sound that I just added to my game. So we have to do two steps to play a sound. First, we have to store the sound in a variable. So I'm going to say here that the spawn sound is going to be a new sound from the file. And now we have to put the name of the file that is unit spawn.wav. Right? That's the name of my. Uh, file unit spawn.wav and the second step is to play the sound so I can just say play underscore sound and now I have to say the name of the variable where I store the sound so spawn sound spawn sound so first I get a new sound and store it inside the variable and later I play the sound using this variable that I created so here, if I press play now, you can see that whenever I click on a card, I spawn a unit and it makes that nice sound, right? Pretty good, pretty good. 
Now let's keep going adding more sounds. The next sound I'm gonna add is the sound for when the enemy spawns a unit. Okay, so we have an, a sound for when I spawn a unit and I also have, I will also have a sound for when the enemy spawns a unit. So let me look for another sound there for the enemy. Okay, I've chosen this one here, the jump sound. So I'm gonna go select asset and here I'm gonna say enemy unit spawn. That's gonna be the name of my sound. And then we have to do the same thing we did for the unit, but now on the enemy unit. So on the enemy unit, I can even use the same name for the variable. So the spawn, the spawn sound, is gonna be a new sound from the file. Oh, let me zoom in again. From the file, uh, enemy unit spa dot mp3. So this one is different, right? One is wav, the other one's mp3. So just pay attention on the on the ending of the the name of your sounds. So enemy sound, uh, enemy unit spa dot mp3, and I have to play sound is paw sound all right so now whenever i press play whenever the enemy creates a enemy unit we can also hear the sound right which is pretty cool so next sound next sound that i want to add to the game is the sound for when we try to summon to spawn our units but we don't have mana enough so i wanted to give like an error sound or a sound that like i don't have mana enough so wait right so i'm gonna go there on my sounds again and look for another sound for that event so i'll choose the food step so i will select asset and here I'm going to say the name card or spawn, spawn fail. That's how I will call this sound, spawn fail. And then now I'm going to go to the pointer and I'm going to go to the pointer because the pointer spawn my card for me, right? And the pointer checks if I have mana enough to spawn a card or not. So the pointer is going to play the sound whenever uh, I, cannot I cannot spawn a card. So here on the start tab, first, I need to get the sound name, uh, the sound in a variable, right? So this is gonna be the fail sound is a new sound from the file. What's the name of the file again? It's paw fail dot mp3. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the loop tab and here on the loop tab, I check if I have pressed the left button, if I'm colliding with the card, then I get the card that I have collided with, and then I check again if my mana is greater or equal than mana cost. And as you can see following this line here, that everything indented inside that if will happen if my mana is greater or equal than my mana cost. However, if it's not greater or equal than my mana cost, I cannot spawn a card, right? So I want to play myself. So here at the end, I'm gonna go back to this line here from the game mana greater or equal than mana cost, right? So I'm gonna go back to that level. So I'm gonna add a new line here. I go back one level. This is the level of this if, no, I need one more. So now I'm on the level of that game mana greater or equal than card mana cost. And here I'm gonna say else and colon. So if I have mana enough to spawn a card, I spawn the cards, right? Whatever, uh, if it doesn't matter if it is the number one or, or number two. If I have mana to spawn such a card, I will spawn such a card. If I don't have mana to spawn a card, then I will go down here to the else and then the code will play the else. So the else is gonna be play sound and play the sound, what is the name of our sound? fail sound so play sound fail sound and whenever i press play if i try to create more units after uh, it's giving me an error fail sound is not defined in pointer loop 
So it says that pointer loop doesn't know what the fail sound is, but because we are not using self. So we need to use self if we want to use it on other tabs, right? So self.fail sound here on the start tab. And on the loop tab, I'm going to do the same. So play sound self.fail sound. And let's try it again. Yeah, you can hear that whenever I don't have mana enough to spawn card, it gives me some footstep sounds, and which is pretty cool, right? And the last two sounds that I want to add is a sound for when the enemy castle is destroyed and one sound for when my player castle is destroyed. So I'm going to get first uh, my player castle sound for when I lose the game. So it's the game lose sound. So I'm going to go here in the sounds and look for an another sound. So here I'm going to get the bubble sound. I select asset and here I'm going to say game over game over sound. Right? So I have here my game over sound dot W A V. I'm going to go now to my castle. Where is my castle? My castle class inside the loop tab. We check here if my castle's life is smaller or equal than zero, that means that my castle has been destroyed, right? And then I check if my castle's team is the player, then I go to the defeat room. If not, I go to the victory room. So here, wait, I forgot to store the, the sound in a variable. So self dot game over sound is a new sound from the file. Uh, game over sound dot w a v game over sound dot w a v right and on the loop tab uh before I go to the defeat room, I want to play sound and I want to play that self dot game over sound okay, and now just to test, I'm gonna go to my enemy unit, make it attack to be 100, so it can give me a single blow. And let's wait for the unit to the enemy unit to get to my castle and see if we can see if we can hear the the game over sound. There you go, working perfectly. Very nice. So I'll stop. And now I'm gonna look for the last sound is the victory sound, right? So here I decided to use this whoosh sound here. So I will select asset. And here I'm going to say victory sound. So I have there my victory sound loaded for us. And on my castle, oh, let me go back to my enemy unit. I'll just make it attack damage to be one again. And I'm going to go to my castle. And here I have my game over sound and I will also have my victory sound that is a new sound from the file. Uh, victory sound dot, what is that? Is it WAV? WAV, yes. So I have the victory sound that is a new sound from the victory sound dot WAV file. So I'm going to go to the loop tab and before I go to the victory room, I want to play sound self dot victory sound. That's all I have to do. And just to test it out again, I'm going to go to my unit and increase my attack damage to a hundred. Press play and I have to create the first unit, right? Because the, the second unit, I changed the, the attributes. So the first unit, there you go. So we have all the sounds working. Let me put my attack damage back to one here. We have all the sounds working. We know how to uh, modify our game if we have to balance something. If you think that one of your enemies is dealing more damage than all of your enemies and you want to reduce that enemy's damage, you, you can just go to the playroom on the loop tab and change the enemy's attributes, right? For speed, life, maximum life, attack damage. Right, so we know how to change everything. We know how to add new cards. If you want to add new cards, we know how to add new enemies. So that's our game. Our game is finished.
uh, it, we have a fully working game. And yeah, that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this course. Let me know in the comments your thoughts about this course. And if you have a link for your game, uh, I would love to see it as well. So you can take the link of your game if you wait, save your game first, and then you go here on these three lines. If you go back on the My Apps, you will find your app there. Here, my app, the Clash Royale. And here you can go to this down arrow here. And here you can either edit your game by changing its thumbnail, the app name, the description, right? And then you can save down there. And you can also here on the arrow, click on the play button and it will bring you to the room that you can, to the page that you can play your game, right? And then you can just take this link at the top here and share it with your friends. If you send this link to your friends, your friends will come to this page and they can, they can also play your game, right? So very nice, very nice. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you around. Bye.